Hello and welcome to the Shift Asia in-depth series with Malaysian International Food and Beverage Trade Fair, MIFB 2024. Uh, the podcast where we dive deep into the heart of sustainable food and beverage innovations across Asia. My name is Frida Liu and as we build up to the MIFB Trade Fair happening in Kuala Lumpur from July 17 to 19, 2024, each episode will shine a light on the pioneers who are reshaping the industry. So whether you're a business owner, a food enthusiast or simply curious, Curious about the future of food, join us as we uncover the tastes of tomorrow today. In this episode, we delve into the inspiring journeys of two innovative businesses that are redefining food waste by salvaging ugly fruits and vegetables, or maybe not necessarily ugly, and transforming them into delicious, sustainable products. Uh, we explore how these companies are not only challenging society beautiful standards for produce, but are also creating economic opportunities and reducing environmental impact. Uh, through the interviews with the founders, uh, we'll also be uncovering the creative processes, the challenges, and the strategies that employ uh, to suit customers and expand uh, their market reach. So join us as we discuss uh, the broader implications of their work on the food and beverage industry and how they contribute to a more sustainable world. We also have a professor here with us to share with us the, the, the technology behind this, right? So we've got with us Haley Young from the Unusual Greens or Tug, and we have Gabriel He from Bantu Me, and Professor Madia Dr. Mohamed Shazrul Fazri from the Faculty of Science and Technology, University of Bangsa, Malaysia. Thank you, everyone. Full room. Uh, very good. We, we'll talk a little bit uh, behind uh, the stories again uh, behind uh, the businesses. So maybe I'll start with ladies first. Haley, how you got started? We all know it's 19 years old when she started this, but share that story. Hello everyone, um, thanks for inviting me here. So how I delved into the realm of food sustainability was when I was 19, mm -hmm. uh, first year of undergrad, and then I got this opportunity to join um, an international pitching competition. And so happened the theme that year was on food. Mm. And they want us to pitch a solution to solve certain issues in the food industry. And my theme came out with uh, food waste because okay. that apparently is like the biggest issue in Malaysia that uh, is not spotlight on yeah. uh, often mm -hmm. and more and more so like other teams are talking about food technology and how to make logistics system more uh, efficient and right. how how to uplift uh, farmers life and all that but nobody really highlighted on food waste okay so that's when uh, we dive deeper into food waste and we realize that Oh, uh, majority of the fresh produce in Malaysia are rejected due to the high aesthetic standards we have mm. in the industry. And these fruits are not necessarily rotten, but yeah. they are just like ugly or a little bit like funny, funky on the outside. Right. For example, like avocados that looks a bit smaller, mm. uh, that doesn't fit into the, you know, the holes the, of the carton. Okay. Yeah, or oranges that has like fingernail scratch marks or dots or okay. dotted skins, uh, bananas, right. and so and so forth. Okay. So then we went down to the market one day, uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, Pasar Borong. Mm. <laughs> and then we started to ask uh, vendors by vendors, uh, the local ones, on like how do they... Uh, handle all of these produce. Mm. So they normally hide it under the table. Okay. <laughs> so then it's out of reach from customers. Customers wouldn't be like, eh, so ugly. <laughs> right. So all of the pre- They were body shaming the yeah, avocados. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> body shaming. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, the first day we went down to the market and we mm. saw like all of the fruit stores basically have these one big baskets of the fruits that they don't want customers to see. Okay. That's rejected. And then we collected those uh, ugly rejected fruits back at a very low cost at that right. time. And everyone was like, why do you want these fruits? Mm. I don't want to sell it. Mm. Nobody wants it. Mm. <laughs> what are you going to do with it, right? So um, we got them and we tell them that, oh, we're going to turn them into ice cream. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and who doesn't like ice cream? <laughs> yeah. So okay. we realized this complicated or like complex issue that has been around for so many years needs like a simple solution to address right. it. And nobody hates ice cream, right? No. So that is why we came up with this solution somewhat mm. to uh, bring awareness to food waste in a mm. more fun and more uh, simple way. Right, yeah. okay, you turn it into ice cream. So I mean, the, that's the thing, right? When you repurpose and change it as well. Uh, so Gabriel, I know because this, your Bantumi was started during the height of the pandemic. Yep. I spoke to your partner, co-founder, but may, for people who don't know, 
Uh, okay. Um, basically, Bantu is a food aid platform okay. where we aid the uh, poverty poor. So this all this happened during lockdown. Um, actually, Anas, the founder, yeah. the, he owns a cafe mm. in Kota Kinabalu. And then uh, during the initial phase, he, he gave out free food in mm. front of his cafe. Yeah. And then uh, every t first day he did like 10 sets and then in an instant it was all gone. Right. Then the following day he did 30 sets, also within an hour it's all gone. Then he came up with the idea coming out a platform to help to give aid to these people. Right. Where people can just log in and register. Right. So it's www.bantuaid.com and then you can register yourself. You need aid, then we will supply you mm. food. This is during MCO. Right. So we also have another partner called Sharizal. He's mm -hmm. a agro tech farmer in, mm -hmm. in Kundasang. Right. So what happened is uh, he told Anas, actually every day we are throwing vegetable away. Wow. Similar to your story. Right. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't meet the commercial grade. So in the agri agriculture um, trade, there is category A, B, C. Yeah. So it doesn't meet all these categories, mm. then it will be thrown away. So what we did is we rescued these vegetables mm. and then uh, we turned them into instant noodle. In right. this case, pan to me. Okay. So during our food admission in Sabah and Sarawak, we gave about 8,000 over packs okay. uh, across Sabah and mm. uh, Sarawak. Um, then we include this pan to me into that program. Okay, and I will get into the technicalities of how this was developed in just a moment, right? And I, I want to just also find out how has the journey been uh, trying to educate consumers and how are they responding then and now? And maybe even from your observation as well, Prof, what do you think people are doing? But maybe I'll, I'll start with you, Haley. I think because of the approach that we have taken, like mm. turning them into a dessert that mm. everyone likes, uh, majority of our customers are only concerned about the product in the right, end. Right. They, they put lesser focus on the story behind, okay. but that's exactly the anger that we are going for right. because uh, we don't want to portray ourselves as just another mm. social business, mm. but it could be fun as well when we talk about sustainability. Mm. But there is always this like small percentage of okay. customers that will always come to us and be like, they are rotten fruit. You sure I won't get some eight? So, okay. <laughs> so uh, we always always try to educate on that by giving more information on how we source, where we source, and okay. how we process it, and how many rounds of screening we go through, right. and all the fruits are always safe based on all of the reviews feedbacks we gather yep. for the past two three years, right? right. So, yeah, it, the the issue is always on transparency and also the safety of consuming them. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But I believe at the end of the day, it's about you know, having a longer life show. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the reason why we did right. Unto yeah. Me is to ensure that, you know, once we created them into instant noodle, mm. at least it has a one year shelf life. Mm. Yeah. You know, vegetable on, you know, after seven days. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, yes. You can't, you can't do anything. Same goes yeah. with fruits. Right. So, um, back in Kuching, I have a uh, urban farm. Mm. So we advocate that as well on sustainability, mm. on natural food, chemical free, uh, food and stuff like that okay and then uh, nutrient dense food I think that's very important because um, there's a study that going that's, that has been published for the last few years that almost 70% 70, 70 of Malaysian children are suffering from Mal malnutrition we are not we are getting food but we're not getting the nourishment yes right yeah uh, is this your Bantu farm Oh, oh no! Another story. This yeah. is another story. Okay. But Bantu Farm. Yeah, we'll I'll get about, to. I'll yeah, get yeah, to that. Yeah, That's yeah. a very. Stay tuned for that bit here. <laughs> Prof, anything to add when it comes to this? Comes? Talk about the shelf life. Is that where you can transfer the technology? Right. So once they had, they did a very noble cause. They create this. Uh, they try to reduce to food waste mm. and transform it into something that's uh, easy to be consumed by the consumer. Yes. Especially, mm. especially for kids. Yeah. yeah. So they did a wonderful job on that. So right. now our job is to make sure that every food that uh, every uh, ingredients that they work with uh, have the co same quality the, the, the real nourishment that, that is important for the kids and as well as the stability and, and safety for the kids as well. mm. so we want to make sure that all the consumers that eat this product is basically get the best out of products mm. even though it's is what you call a reject but it's not really a reject right yeah so but it's, they still have the same quality they still mm. have the same nourishment they still have the same vitamins so nutrient level like nutrient levels yes. so right Right. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, you know. Uh, of course, both what both of you are doing, right, are great, right. But at the end of the day, how do you manage, you know, uh, cost and profitability? Is that a focus right now, or uh, maybe Gabriel? 
Okay. Oh, you start with me? Okay. Yeah, I'll start with you. Um, for Bantu Me, currently we are still in the product phase right. where that's where we got prof in and uh, see how we can make it, you know, uh, more to, to fine tune the product to mm. make it more marketable to, to the first consumer group. Um, but for the last three years, uh, because we've been giving food aid, we get grants and stuff, um, we do food mission. Mm. So that's how we actually promote right. the noodle itself. Right. And uh, advocacy is very important in mm. that. Um, to schools, to NGOs, or civil society, mm. or when we approach a village and we would let them know that, okay, all these are vital and it's cheaper. And, uh, and and today, food, food, food in Malaysia, very high, expensive. Right. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So we try to bring that down. Right. Uh, yeah, that's... that's um, when it comes to margin, currently we are selling at 8 ringgit per pack, mm -hmm. which can serve a family of four. Mm -hmm. So if you divide it, it's about 2 ringgit each. Yeah. Mm. Okay, right. Really? For managing yeah, cost and profitability? I would say that's a competitive edge when mm. you use like resources that are unwanted, right? Yes. But still has the market value there. Right. Uh, but the common misconception on like our profits and margins are like, oh, you get it at fifty percent off. Right. Uh, Confident margin will be very very high, sky mm. high. Mm. Uh, but not exactly the case. We do have a higher margin, but we compensate it by reinvesting back the profits into the quality of the product. Okay. So for example, people normally uh, in the industry, we would try to lower down the milk cost, the sugar cost, the, all the cost that goes into making mm. basic gelato. Mm. But we try to, uh, for example, only source for brown sugar or raw cane sugar for our vegan product range. Milk, we try to use fresh milk and then so and so forth of all the ingredients. Uh. So. Okay. Uh, the cost and margins are at a healthy level, mm. but we try to still give the best out of the product to the customer. Okay, all right. And so, Prof, I just want to know a little bit about yourself and your involvement in sustainability, and you are involved in the development of the Bantu Mi. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, and for people who don't know what Bantu Mi, because we're talking about Bantu Mi, but what actually constitutes the Bantu Mi? Okay, so uh, when you talk about Bantu Mi, of, of course, the, the basic ingredient is the the, the normal mm. flour and everything. But what really makes it more interesting is much more nutrition, nutrition is that they have the farm in uh, Sabah. In mm. Ranao. In, in Ranao. Yeah. So, so basically what they did is that they have this a uh, lot of vegetable wastage. Right. That, that's not, not really wastage, it's more like it's a reject because they not, does not follow oh, the certain standard okay. yeah. uh, in the market. Yeah. Mm. So what they did, we, they, we process it into a small kind of a powdered form, uh, freeze-dried. Mm. So they retain all the, all the flavor, all the nutrients. So from there, we take the powder and put it incorporated into the, in the, in the noodles. Okay. So that's what we did. So this makes the noodle uh, have... Uh, so we actually preserve the nutrition of this food right. and make it have a longer shelf life. True. So it, it, it helps in two uh, tiers. One, to produce the noodles, which is can be consumed directly. Second, we've actually produced the powders of all the vegetables. So in the end of the day, that uh, whenever there's a shortage of food or vegetable, you can actually incorporate the powders as well. Ah. So for other products. Right. So yeah. So I think uh, Anas mentioned he has under initiative as well. So but uh, I think that we will not. Yeah, we talk. We talk about. We are going to our next. Yeah. Product, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Are, are we up, are we IPing the product? Well, uh, usually in this kind of things uh, in, in our UC kind of. Uh, Arena, okay. we like to IP stuff. Right. But the thing is that one thing about the misconception of IP, they always say that IP is we make the things much costlier. Mm. But it also depends on how you want to use the IPs. I mean, okay. if it, it happens on a good cause, basically the the only thing that it does is just that uh, just to make sure that uh, all the SOP because once we IP stuff, we have actually make sure all the standard protocol is there, right. all the golden standard is there, all the QC is there. So just making sure that everything is there. So once we have the product, all the product is pretty much standardized. Uh, you have a much more preserved nutrition. So that's internal IPs. So okay. yeah, so there's a lot of way how you play around with the IPs. Right. Yeah. How are we selling, distributing the Bantu Me at the moment online? Um, we sell online. Mm. We we do we, we do sell in Shopee. Okay. Initially, uh, we work with corporate partners. Okay. Um, people like uh, AAsia Grocer, mm. um, Petronas. Uh, We've given food admission during the last earthquake in the Middle East. Okay. Uh, we gave about 3,000 packs, if not mistaken. Wow. And then... Uh, I think really to the Bantu? Uh? Yeah, really, really, really to Bantu. Really to the to refugees Bantu. Okay, and, right, and right. During, during the earthquake. Okay. Um, and then um, 
uh, two years ago, there was a huge flood in, in, in Terengganu, Kelantan. Yeah. So yeah. We, we also, um, part of the food security effort is uh, we did house about 10,000 packs of Bantu Mi in KL okay. in the warehouse, okay. just in case you know, they were preparing for the following year. They were worried that the same thing will happen. But it didn't happen, so uh, in the end, we, we give it out to the food aid mission as well. And the shelf life is very long on the yeah, noodles. One year. Oh, one year. Okay. Um, you know, Haley, you started another store, right? So, I know how uh, did you know there was a right time to expand? Um, the Bangsa Outlet. Mm. Yeah, Bangsa Outlet is coming soon in okay. May, end right. of May. So, how do I know it's right time mm. is when uh, most of our customers mm. are based in Bangsa, okay. Port Kiara, TDDI, and all, everywhere around okay. KL. Right. And we've known that since day one of operating the okay. business because we started off by going to pop-ups and bazaars near Publica, that okay. area. That's why we curated this community or customer group that will always, always support the brand for right. what we stand for. And we've always wanted to go to Bangsa. And now, looking at the current Sri Kemangan outlet, the first outlet, the people that come back are the people from the neighborhood. Mm. But the majority of the customers only come back like once or twice a week because they have to drive like 40 minutes all the way to eat a gelato, mm. which is pain there. <laughs> but like... Uh, carbon like, emissions. <laughs> yeah, carbon emissions. We're trying to make it sustainable for our customers. Okay. So yeah, we are going towards our customer. Very soon. And so interesting, right? You say that people will go very far to support a brand because it's something they believe in as well, right? So I think a lot of it also has to do with marketing and branding. When you've got a great product, but you don't know how to market it, it's also a challenge as well. You know, so I want to know a little bit, uh, Prof, you know, how you get your, your work, how does your work uh, bring home the message of sustainability? You know, what other kind of projects are you working on? So we are a part of being part of the Department of Food Sciences in our faculty. Mm. I'm also the head of the Tasi Chini Research Centre okay. in Pekan, yep. Pahang. So this, our centre is actually located within the Biosphere Reserve. Uh, okay. It's in Southern UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserve in, uh, in Tasi Chini. Right. So uh, we always work with the community over there. We work with Orang Asli. We work with the well-being and health of the honestly, mental and physical. Mm. So we're also working on the environment as well. So when we talk about sustainability, it's always, uh, in our case, it's all about man and biosphere, how mm. the man incorporated in the biosphere, how man manage the biosphere, and mm. how the bio biosphere in the end provide the ecosystem services back to the man. Mm. So when we talk about this, it's all about how we holistically manage in a very balanced kind of right. way. So that's the message when we talk about Bantumi as well. It's the same thing as well because uh, there is a Malay word called Bobudi Palatana mm -hmm. and they will come, come back to yes, you. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, it's the same thing as what happened. Uh, that's how we actually in line with Bantu, uh, Bantu Group when they started up the project. Uh, so it's all about how we manage our resources mm. and how we actually respect our resources as well. Yeah. So not to just just throw it away and yeah. make use of our, all of it as much as possible. Right. So that's our, our, how we, well, our, yeah. first, our philosophy behind it, right. how we work together. So. For, can I add on? Sure. For the Bantu Me, um, actually we have three impacts. Okay. Um, one is I mentioned earlier mm. the children yeah. suffering from uh, micro deficiency mm. or um, malnutrition. Second impact is to help the farmer livelihood because yeah. whenever we buy back this rescue vegetable, we, we, we actually help them instead of throwing it to waste mm. or whatever. The third impact is more on climate. So go, yes. yeah, going back to nature, I'm sure you're doing the same thing yeah. as well. I applaud you for that. Um, yeah, understand nature. Uh, because climate change is, is happening and, mm. and, and hence uh, the third impact is also very crucial in, in, right. in this part. Right. And so uh, interesting like how Bantumi started with uh, out in Sabah and then you were saying that they were the people who were not getting enough food but there were also challenges in Sarawak as well at yes. the same time, right? Yeah. Sometimes we Actually, it's across Malaysia. It's across Malaysia. Yes, we know that. <laughs> and and sad, right? And and uh, you also started Bantu Farm. Yeah, we started Bantu Farm. Yes. Okay, what's the story behind okay, that? Okay, Bantu Farm is actually in collaboration with the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Food mm -hmm. Security. And with AASIA Grocer, we started a, 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 green, a farm in, in real, real school in Chiras. Right. Uh, it's actually a green finger project where we educate the young to let them understand what is uh, agrotech all about. Mm. And uh, to let them understand, you know, um, the food system, what's happening around the world, and and basically 
the notion of I don't have green fingers. Okay. <laughs> but it's actually, true. <laughs> it's true. actually, it's not true. Okay. <laughs> Anyone can grow. <laughs> now everyone can grow, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, if you understand the fundamentals, um, yeah. getting the right ingredient, um, getting the right seeds, mm. uh, I think seeds is very pivotal in this case. Um, you can literally grow anything, anyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's part of our advocacy to 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 at least um, to to embark this journey and teaching these kids on life skill, on having another right. life skill. I think right. that's important. Yeah. And start pe people start having little. Uh, Gardens at home. Yeah, yeah. Be at, by the balcony or, or yeah, may, maybe in the balcony or you have a small small land or in your backyard yeah. or even your car porch. You can actually have. A, I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can have a raised bed or you can do lettuces, tomato, cherry tomatoes. Um, but my chili is not growing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we can help you with that. <laughs> my chili buddy is not yeah. growing. Um, it, and I guess at the end of the day, in, in terms of what, what's your message uh, for, for people on what they can do around, um, you know, uh, ensuring that we don't have food waste. Do we go to to your shop to have more gelatos? I mean, I, you know, I guess, what, how can people support you at large? I think... Supporting the business is one thing, right. but the main mission of the business is to raise awareness so okay. that people can do it on their own. Yeah. So whenever you go to grocery or markets, there's always this reduced section. Uh -huh. At least it's implemented in majority of the groceries right. in Malaysia. So just go to the reject section and pick up some apples or oranges right. that is still consumable. Right. Bring them home, educate your children right. because the kids are the ones that brings the habit forward, right? That's why we also run a lot of like advocacy programs like going to schools, international or local to talk about this mm. and then in the end give all the kids a gelato and they'd be like, oh, I don't hate ugly fruits anymore. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah. And you found love. <laughs> um, one of the reasons why children are having uh, malnutrition is because of fast food. Right. <laughs> right. You give them a choice whether vegetables awesome. or McDonald's or whichever fast food chain, they will right. choose right. the later. So um, we, 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 this is where we try to introduce, you know, vegetable is actually good for you. Um, you, you should take more nutrients and, right. and, and greens actually. You put it into the noodles. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, one way is to, 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 to turn them into pastos. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and make into sandwiches and stuff like that. Right. Incorporate it into finger food where mm. it's easy for them to, to eat it or to digest or mm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, totally agree with Haley and Gab mm. in terms of how to approach this, especially uh, regarding children. Mm. So, yeah, it's very hard for children to actually accept uh, vegetables, yes. say. <laughs> and it's always that our challenge is to transform this uh, to another form that's more palatable to them, yeah. which is uh, interesting. But uh, we couldn't deny that sometimes awareness and education is very important. Right. So that's actually the key for every problem uh, that we have, actually. So as long as we actually introduce them with the good food, natural food, and slowly introduce them, because sometimes it's just like you you treat them with something good, uh, something mm. that's sweet and snacks, then mm. change it to, to ice cream, then slowly trans transition to a more healthy vegetable is something really or good. Or healthy choice. Healthy choice. Yeah. Mm. As well as uh, just imagine that uh, you have children that you can really see the benefits in terms yeah. of uh, saying, yeah, okay, you can eat this, your skin is more glowing, things yes. like that. And sometimes they really like these kind of things. And okay. especially for boys, when you see they eat vegetables, they, they can, can Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider <laughs> things like that. I mean, they, they, Popeye. In, uh, Popeye. Once upon a yeah. time, it was Popeye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. yeah, they, they'll be more, more engaging, they're more into it. So those are the things that we can actually teach them right. in, in the right. future. Yeah. Uh, the think, last few years, we also uh, have many testimonials where kids gorging on our, mm. our noodles, right. ambantumi noodles, right. and, and they actually love it. Mm. And 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 um, yeah, across across the bar in Sarawak and KL as well, mm. and even adults love them. Mm -hmm. uh, like um, back in the days when Petronas was taking mantumi, um, they normally serve it during catering for their events and stuff. Mm, yeah. Okay, yeah. and I think one of the things is really very simple: uh, monkey see, monkey do, yes, right? Yes. How the parents eat, 
how the children will yes, eat, right? Exactly. So if your children's behaving a certain way, they're also observing you, you know, so simple things like that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, Haley, uh, Gabriel, and Prof, right? Uh, of course, you've been watching the Shift Asia in-depth series with the Malaysia International and a Beverage Food uh, Trade Fair, MIFB 2024. Uh, it was a pleasure to uh, bring you today's story of innovation and impact in the F&B sector, and the conversation doesn't end here. Join us at the MIFB Trade Fair this July uh, to see these sustainable practices in action and discover how you can be part of this industry transformation.